Hey everybody, Brandon here from Cat Intentions, and in today's video, I'm going to show you a handful of tips and tricks when creating viewports. We're going to go from a blank layout to a fully set up layout like this. Uh, along the way, I'm going to show you how to set scales, change scales, add multiple viewports, what to do if you get locked in a viewport, and a ton more tips. Before we jump in, I want to thank Plex Earth for sponsoring today's video. If you guys haven't checked them out already, you can check them out at the link up above and down below. Their add-in lets you add imagery, contours, and more to AutoCAD, as well as integrate it with Google Earth. We'll touch on that a little later. Let's jump right into today's video. So as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be creating a basic site plan with a layout and key or index plan as well. This is a layout with three viewports, basically showing three different scales of your project so you can figure out where it is as well as see some of the detail of your site. Uh, to start, you're going to need your base data. You can see in ours, I've just got the basics. I've got some property. Uh, I've got a highlighted property. Uh, line here that we're going to be focusing on and then I've also got a index map over here showing where in the world we are. Uh, I'm going to add in imagery using Plex Earth and if you wait a little bit further into the video you'll see a bit more about them but Plex Earth allows you to instantly bring in Google imagery and contours directly into plain AutoCAD and Civil 3D. I'm just going to turn on my imagery here in the menu and you can see I've now got street view imagery uh, showing all of the houses, streets, and property in my area. Now we're going to go back to the layout tab here. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks when it comes to viewports. If you haven't worked with the layouts at all, uh, you're going to want to go to the layout tab up here and to insert or create viewports, you're going to go to this block right here. You've got a few different options. You can choose between different shapes, rectangular, uh, polygonal, or an object. These are going to allow you to create viewports using different methods. Rectangular is going to let you just draw a box. Polygonal is going to let you draw a box but have multiple points so you can have an irregular shape like the example there. And object is going to allow you to create a viewport out of an object, a circle for example. If I wanted to do that, I'd hit this down arrow, choose object, and there I've got a viewport. If I double click inside of it, I can move it around, zoom in by scrolling on the scroll wheel, and I've got a circular viewport here that I can now click out of to get out of it and delete if I don't need it. Now for our example, we're going to have three rectangular viewports since this is going to be the standard and most typical. Uh, occasionally you'll have a polygonal one. Uh, typically you're not going to have a circle, but that could be useful. So to create our viewports, I'm going to go back to the rectangular one here and it's going to ask me for my corner of my viewport. We're just going to do the corner over here and I'm going to turn off snapping and we're just going to give it a bit of a buffer and our main plan is going to take up the majority of our sheet. So you can see I've got it created there. Now by selecting our viewport, you can change or set the scale in the properties. So control plus one is going to open up your properties and you can set your scale here as well as right here. Using the standard scale dropdown, you're going to have various options depending on the template you're using uh, and your company or jobs uh, typical standards. You can also select a viewport and change the scale down at the bottom here by hitting this a little fly out arrow and just selecting a scale. So we can try say one to a thousand and I know that my view that I want to show is the property so it's over to the left. I've double clicked inside the model space uh, or the viewport to activate model space. I can now pan across and find my location. I know it's over here by the imagery and I'm going to find that property right there. Double clicking outside is going to deactivate the viewport. You can also click the paper and model button down here. So if I'm inside a viewport and I can't get out, maybe you can't see the edges. So if you're zoomed in and accidentally click inside of a viewport, you can see I'm moving the viewport around, but I can't get out now. So clicking this little model button here is going to switch to paper space and now I can scroll back out. So that's a good tip if you ever get stuck in a viewport and need to get out quickly. Today's video is sponsored by Plex Earth. I've talked about Plex Earth a few times on the channel before, but if you're not familiar with it, 
Plex Earth is an AutoCAD and Civil 3D plugin that helps bring additional data and visualization into your project. This can include imagery, surface data, and integration with Google Earth. You can easily download and install the plugin from their website and unlock up-to-date imagery, terrain, and visualization options instantly. With Plex Earth, you have the ability to import up-to-date satellite imagery from a variety of sources, including Google Earth, Airbus, Hexagon, Nearmap, and Maxar, along with others. Just a few clicks and you can select your image source, choose an area you'd like the imagery to cover, and have it inserted directly into your drawing as a background image. The image is automatically downloaded and geo-referenced within your drawing, creating a mosaic of high-resolution images in just a few minutes. Once your image is in the drawing, you also have options built in to process and clip images as needed to get the best results you're looking for in your drawing. One feature I really like is the ability to specify a corridor width and then have the imagery automatically populated along, say, an alignment of a new road design or some other area that you are working on. Not only does this save you time, but it will also help keep your drawing size in check by only using imagery relevant to your area of interest. Having up-to-date imagery can be a game changer for project design, especially in early phases where you may need to quickly design a concept that can be integrated and work with existing features of an area without the added costs of a full survey or getting imagery flown specifically for your project. If you'd like to learn more and try out Plex Earth, you can find the link in the description down below. And if you're one of the first five people to click the special offer link, you can get two months of Plex Earth Pro subscription completely free. As a special promotion for Cat Intentions viewers, I highly recommend you guys check it out. Again, that link is down below in the description. Thank you to Plex Earth for sponsoring today's video. So back to setting up this view here, we're gonna select our viewport again, and we're gonna change the scale to say one to 500. I think this is a good scale to show this building. Uh, it's got the property in the full window here, and you can add some labels like your street name, some dimensions, maybe outline an area that you're gonna be doing work, maybe putting in a new fence or a deck around this pool. Now we're gonna double click outside here, and now we're going to create our next two viewports to show a kind of zoomed out location plan as well as a closer uh, version as well. So to create our next viewport, we're gonna repeat the process. We're gonna create a rectangle one. We're going to snap to our top corner here so it's nice and in line with it. And we're gonna come down to about here. So this is going to be our index or key map. And this one, we're just going to zoom in using the scroll wheel. And we're, this one's not going to be to scale. So when we add, say, a title bar here later, you could call it key plan, and then underneath you'd put NTS for not to scale. And this is simply because we're just going to zoom to a scale that matters or matches kind of with a view we want. So I'm going to zoom to about here, and this star there is our city or location. This gives you an idea of the towns around so somebody looking at this drawing knows roughly where you are. Now this isn't super helpful with a key plan this far out. So the next plan we're going to show is say a location plan. So you can copy a viewport. So I'm going to hit CO and enter and select this last viewport here and hit enter again. Now I can copy this viewport down below. So we're going to just turn on ortho. I'm going to put it below here and click to confirm. So now I've got a bit of room to put a title and a title down here along with a scale. You can adjust the viewport here to match. And now you've got kind of three evenly spaced viewports that you can add labels and titles to, uh, as well as adjust the scales of independently. So for this one here, we're gonna double click back into it. We're gonna zoom over to our property. And in this one, I want an in-between view so you can tell roughly where our property is in this neighborhood. So for that, we're gonna try say one to 5,000 and that looks pretty good. You can move this kind of like that. And now if I were setting this up as an actual drawing, I would add labels, labeling the streets as well as say a few of the property numbers. And I'd point maybe a leader with a note saying subject property or something to that extent. 
This is going to allow you to show your area and property in three different views and give the reader of the drawing a good idea of where exactly this project is. Now your next drawings would include things like details, whether you're building a retaining wall or a fence, you would show a little bit more detail on that, including some elevations and sections perhaps, depending on the project. So now that we have our base drawing set up, a few more tips and tricks when it comes to viewports. If you're selected or inside one of these viewports by double clicking, you can use the control and then R key to rotate to the next viewport on the sheet. So holding down control and tapping R is going to switch the focus from viewport to viewport. This is a great way to quickly change between views uh, if you need to copy and paste or switch what you're doing and working on. Uh, it is also helpful if you happen to have a view that is within a view and you can't click inside of it. Uh, sometimes viewports, say if you have a uh, detail viewport right here that's on top of it, it can be difficult to double click inside that one because the outer one is activating. That's easy enough to do with Control and R. You can simply switch to it or cycle viewports. All right, so the next tip I wanted to show you is how to quickly move objects from your layout space into your model space. So you can see here I've added a piece of text, but this is in my layout. Now it's good practice to have your text in model space so that it can be used between multiple viewports and so that it'll be kept in the same and proper location. Because if I ever move this viewport, my text is not going to move with it. So having it in model space prevents any of those kind of accidents from happening. Now using the change space or CH space command is going to allow you to move objects between model space and layout space and vice versa. So typing in CH space and hitting enter, it's going to ask you to select some objects. We're going to select this road text and we're going to hit enter. Now it's going to ask for the target viewport. It's going to guess by default typically the one that the text is on top of, and you can see it's highlighted this one here. That's correct for us, so we're gonna hit enter to hit okay, and now you can see that this text is in the model space, not in the viewport. So you can see it's showing up in this one as well, and it's now dynamic and part of our model space, so I've double clicked inside this viewport, and now when I move things around, that text is going around with it because it's in model space with our property lines and XRefs and imagery. All right, so the next tip, once I've got my viewports set up roughly the way I'd like them and I'm kind of done moving them around, I want to lock them all so I don't accidentally move or drag them once I've set them up. This can be easily achieved by selecting a viewport and clicking on the little lock icon down in the bottom right here, or you can select multiples and do the same thing. You can also right click and go to display locked and choose yes. This is going to lock each viewport that you have selected and the same goes if you need to move them around. You just do the reverse and unlock them. So you can see now if I double click in the viewport, my whole layout moves around and the view does not change. Now this is a great way to prevent anything from getting messed up or shifted by accident. You can see that all of my views have stayed the same because they're all locked. And again, if you want to unlock one, simply select it and right click, go to display lock and no, or just click the blue lock icon in the bottom right. Clicking it again will lock it and prevent things from being moved around. All right, so I've now added the text labels to each of my viewports and we're pretty much done for today's tutorial. But one more thing I wanted to show you was if you need to freeze or not show any of your layers in any specific viewport, you can use the layer freeze uh, option and that is as easy as activating the viewport you'd like to freeze some layers. Going to the home tab here, and selecting the freeze button. Selecting an object is going to freeze that layer in this specific viewport only. So if I want to remove that one road label we added, I simply click it and hit enter. And you can see it's now frozen or not shown in this viewport here, but it is still shown in our site plan view here. Now this can also be a great tip to work in reverse. If you're having any issues with lines or objects not showing up in a specific viewport, be sure to check your layer list with the viewport activated to see if there are any frozen layers. You can see that there are by 
this blue uh, snowflake symbol being on a layer. That's meaning or showing that that layer is frozen or turned off within this viewport only. So that's all for today's video. I hope you guys learned a bit in this example of a layout and site plan setup and viewport tips. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to check out our sponsor, Plex Earth, to bring imagery and contours directly into your drawings in just a few clicks. You can use the links up above and down below to get a two month free trial. I highly recommend Plex Earth. I use them in my day to day workflows. It saves me a ton of time. That's all for today's video. Make sure you guys subscribe and like it and let me know in the comments what type of video or subject you'd like to see some tips and tricks on next. Cheers.